Hey, I'm back dudes. So we're gonna do ray casting, and I don't actually know if it's changed, but ray casting's kinda cool anyway. So by the end of this, you'll be able to do this with your project. We'll be able to play, run around and shoot stuff, and whatever we shoot will disappear magically uh, due to the uh, the power of ray casting. So for anyone that doesn't know, ray casting is essentially you just cast a uh, invisible ray and uh, using what is called a hit result we can see what we've hit with the ray uh, we can also see uh, not just what we've hit, if we've hit multiple things you can check for multiple hits uh, you can check for what angle did it hit the um, the object at lots of different things all uh, due to hit result. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so like I'm totally gonna forget if I don't say it now. So first thing you want to do, just um, change this to engine.h because we're gonna be using a function and we need engine.h not engine minimal. So if you just go to rc.h, change that so it says engine.h and you are away. Anyways, raycasting. Right, let's get started. Um, so... First thing we're going to do is add a little protected, or private block actually. We'll um, come down here and we'll just type private, and then we'll make a function void ray cast. And that casts a ray, surprise, surprise. So, once we have made void ray cast, we right click and then go create declaration slash definition. And that's going to create a definition, and for some reason, this takes like six hours. That time it was pretty fast. Sometimes it takes like six hours just to make a function declaration, I don't know why. Anyways, so we have the declaration. You could type it yourself, but I'm lazy, so, you know. Um, and then up here, uh, where is it? Right. So up here you want to change this line so that it says raycast instead of fire. So by default it's set up to call the fire function. So just change it so that it says raycast instead. Right, let's uh, let's get started. So the first thing we need is that hit result I was talking about. So a hit result is a struct. I don't know if anyone knows what a struct is yet. But if you know what a struct is, uh, it's kind of like a class, it just stores a bunch of data inside it. And there we go. So we have a new hit result, we are making a pointer to a hit result. And the first thing we're going to get is the, um, the start trace, in terms of locations, the first thing, start trace. And we're going to get the location of, not the player, but the camera. Because that's where you want to cast a ray from, always. Always uh, cast it from the camera and not from the player. So I'm going to say get first person camera component. Actually, we'll just use that. And then get forward vector. Get forward vector. Where is it? There we go. So there we go. We've got a forward vector. And now we're going to get the, uh, the end vector. We'll call it end trace. And we're going to do the following. We're going to take that start trace, which is just a vector that points forward in whatever direction we're facing. And then we're going to times that by 5,000. That's going to mean that the... It basically takes, say the start point's like over here somewhere. If we times it by 100, it might end here. Since we're timesing it by 5,000, it's way over here somewhere. So we have as much... Uh, we have a very long ray cast. If you're ever uh, making like a gun or something like that, you always want a very long uh, ray cast. And then we're going to add the start trace onto that, otherwise our um, end trace would be in the middle of nowhere. Sweet, uh, let's see here. The last thing we need is the query params. So we're gonna do the same thing as the hit result. It's just if collision query params. And some people like to just call this CQP and then new if collision query params. And there we go, dudes. 
make that a pointer. Cool. So, um, I don't know, like, how often line tracers actually fail to cast. I don't know under what condition they wouldn't, what it, you know, when it would fail. But it is a good idea to just check if it was successful anyway. I'm sure there are times when a ray cast couldn't be casted. Maybe the world, uh, wasn't found successfully or something. I don't know. We're going to use line trace, uh, single by channel. And this requires us to put in a channel, as the name suggests. So we're going to put in, um, let's see, the hit result, the start trace, the end trace, and finally the, uh, the collision query params, like that. So now we've done all of that. So now inside here, we basically know that the uh, the line trace was successful. Our ray cast worked, right? And oh, we need another parameter, the channel, of course. We're gonna use ECC visibility. I think you can make your own channels, but uh, for our purposes, ECC visibility works just fine. That's just one of the ray casting channels. Uh, and we're gonna draw a debug line. Just to see where our uh, our trace has gone down, so we use get world start trace and trace, and we'll pass in a color. Let's just make an RGB color. We'll do um, red, and then we just pass in true, so that the lines are persistent and they never go away. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to destroy whatever we've hit. So you remember I told you guys that when we cast a ray, we can find out what our ray has hit, right? What is the uh, the ray collided with? Because we used line trace single, it's only going to let us check for one single collision. But if you use line trace multi, you can check for a bunch of different ones. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we hit something. So we're going to say if hit result get actor is not equal to null. So if the actor is not equal to null, then oh we've hit something, and now we can do hit result get actor destroy. So destroy whatever we've hit. And now we can actually go into the game, run around, shoot stuff, destroy it, and um, blow a bunch of stuff up, I guess. If we wanted to, we could make like an explosion effect happen. That'd be kind of cool. So let's test it out. We'll go play. We'll go shoot something. And it did nothing. Why is it doing nothing? Ah! Ugh, I don't like that at all. I do not like that at all. Um, oh god, what have I done? No! This never happens. Usually these videos just work. I don't usually mess stuff up. Um, oh god, what have we done? I want to find this quickly so I don't have to stop recording because I'm lazy. Uh, dude, I don't know. Alright guys, I'll be back. We'll find out what I did wrong. Wow. So I've screwed some stuff up before. But I have never screwed up that bad. I that That is embarrassing. So, we actually want the forward vector. I don't know how, I must have had like some sort of brain aneurysm thing going on. But we want to store the forward vector in here, like this. Get forward vector, and this should just be equal to the location, so get component location. Like that. And then, instead of adding start trace, I don't know what I'm doing, um, forward vector not start trace. I don't know how I screwed that up so badly because I was reading my code over here and uh, I don't know 
<laughs> my apologies. Anyways, so that was the biggest fail ever, but anyways. We should now have a working ray casting system. So we'll try that now. And there we go. So I can shoot stuff. And uh, if it ray casts successfully, then we'll get this red line up here. And uh, you can see 5,000 is a pretty long distance. The line ends way over there somewhere. So yeah, and we can shoot these objects destroy them. I'm sure you can make a game out of this if you wanted to, but anyway, it's maybe like a target game. You have a bunch of squares moving around and you got to shoot them or something. You guys could probably make something simple like that. Anyways, that's it. Easy stuff. Ray casting. Not as scary as you think it is. It's actually pretty easy and really useful too. So anyways, see you guys in the next video.